It's a day of celebration at NASA. After a nine-year, three-billion-mile journey, the New Horizons spacecraft reached its goal of flying within 7,800 miles of Pluto. This is your Tuesday Lunch Break. I'm Tanya Rivero. So what can we learn about Pluto and our solar system from the New Horizons flyby? We're joined by former NASA astronaut John Grunsfeld now. Hi, John. Thanks so much for being with us. What do scientists hope to learn from this flyby? Well, prior to the Pluto New Horizons spacecraft flying by, uh, the best images ever of Pluto came from the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting the Earth three billion miles away. So we had no idea what really to expect. We had a few clues that Pluto has a tenuous, very thin atmosphere, uh, but we had no idea what Pluto would really look like, whether it would be a cloud-enshrouded world, a simple world, just a cratered uh, surface like the moon. And what we've already seen from the highest resolution images that we got just uh, last night, Pluto is a very complex world with different features, uh, some light, some dark, uh, some smooth, some cratered, some features that we just completely don't understand. So we're going to learn a lot about how our solar system was formed, how these uh, early bodies like Pluto uh, that are frozen remnants uh, from the early solar system were formed. And it looks like uh, the story isn't over yet, that, that some of these features could be very young, that Pluto is still alive out there. And, uh, and that's just very exciting for planetary scientists and for people trying to understand uh, all of the planets of our solar system. Clarify something for me, if you will. We're no longer supposed to call Pluto a planet, correct? Well, you know, Pluto is, is called a dwarf planet now. It's a member of a new class of planets because there are many, many dwarf planets out there, both in our main asteroid belt, uh, but also in the distant regions of our solar system. And, and I don't think, I mean, that's a nomenclature. I actually think the fact that there are many planets like Pluto has promoted uh, Pluto to, in some ways, a higher status. Uh, there are lots of them out there, so it's very interesting, and we're just thrilled about the images. The science community is going bananas looking at this picture. Very exciting. Absolutely. Now, put this into context for us. Three billion miles. Is this the furthest into our solar system a NASA spacecraft has traveled? Because we know the sun is only 93 million miles from the Earth. Yep, the, the Pluto New Horizon spacecraft is setting new records in speed and distance. Uh, right now, the Voyager uh, spacecraft are further away, um, but Pluto New Horizons is zipping out there. So uh, it, what's really, I think, amazing is it was only 50 years ago today that our first spacecraft that flew by a planet, Mariner 4, flew by Mars. And in that short 50-year span, the United States of America has done a reconnaissance, a flyby of every planet. And of course, we've orbited, we've landed, we have rovers now on Mars. Uh, but, but this flyby Pluto this morning was the capstone of, of a tremendous history for humanity and for the United States. It's very, very exciting, and especially taking into consideration that scientists were very nervous, correct? That orbital debris could damage or destroy the spacecraft? Well, the truth is we're still a little bit nervous because we won't hear from the spacecraft again until tonight, uh, just after 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, of course, the signal will have been spent, sent from the spacecraft four and a half hours earlier, but because of the, the finite speed of light, it has to travel all those billions of miles to get to Earth. So we're all crossing our fingers and our toes until tonight uh, when New Horizons phones home. And what is next for the New Horizons spacecraft? Is it continuing out there? What's next after Pluto? Well, it flew by at about 30,000 miles an hour. Uh, so there's no brakes out there. <laughs> it's going to continue out into the deep solar system. Uh, but the whole idea was as it flew by Pluto, it took lots and lots of images, lots and lots of scientific data, and it was all stored in its memory. So for the next 16 months, uh, it's going to be sending those images and that scientific data back to Earth. Uh, the Internet is very slow out there, uh, and so it's going to take a lot for us to get all of that science back. So this is, Pluto New Horizons is going to keep giving us gifts continuously, and as it travels further out, we hope that it can encounter another body, uh, sort of a, a building block of planets, way out there in the distant solar system. Thank you, NASA astronaut John Grunsfeld, for all of that. It's very, very exciting. Thanks for being with us.